Welcome. Welcome everyone. I'm really happy you joined us today for our Food Smart Cooking with Spices demonstration. I'm very excited to have with us here Brad Curley and Chef Lisa Lavery from Food Smart. And um, throughout time today, if you have any questions, please feel free to add those to the chat. Um, there will be time at the end, of course, to also ask questions. And this is being recorded, so this will be um, at the Discover Wellbeing SharePoint site. I can share that link with everyone in the chat. Okay. Just a quick reminder to please stay on mute um, throughout today's session. So I will now um, turn it over to you, uh, Chef Lisa. Welcome and thanks for being here with us today. I think you're on mute, Lisa. I really took that seriously when you said to be on mute. <laughs> so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lisa Lavery and I am the head of culinary development and member marketing manager for Food Smart. And today we're gonna talk about cooking with spices. Uh, first, I'm gonna hand it over to my coworker, Brad, and let him tell you a little bit about what to expect today. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Brad Curley. I am a customer success manager at FoodSmart and thrilled that you all um, are able to join us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, so as Chef Lisa said, we're excited to share with you today uh, a cooking demo for cooking with spices. And just before we get into that, just to share with you, FoodSmart's vision is to empower people across the country to eat well, simply, easily, and cost-effectively. Uh, so that they may live healthier lives free of chronic disease and nutrition security. So our hope is that um, we're able to help with that today. And with that said, I will turn it over to Chef Lisa. Great, thank you, Brad. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. There we go. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we sure can. So dried herbs and spices in your pantry give culinary focus and flavor to every recipe that include them in their ingredient list, but it's hard to know how to best use them. So in this cooking demo, I'm going to teach you the basics of cooking with spices. And the goal is at the end of the video, you'll know how to purchase and store your spices, the techniques of toasting and blooming ground and whole varieties, and even how to make your own fresh spice blends. So I'll come back on screen after the video is over, it's about eight minutes long to answer any questions you have. And with that, let's watch the video. And thank you for joining us for Food Smart's video series, Cooking with Spices. We've all got them, right? Various jars, bottles, and boxes of spices taking up real estate in our pantries. Spices and dried herbs are added to recipes all the time and with good reason. They give healthy flavor and culinary focus without adding a lot of salt or fat. In addition to making dishes taste delicious, they have great health benefits. They can reduce inflammation, lower blood sugar, relieve nausea, boost heart health, and even ease pain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cook with various spices and herbs to coax out all of that great flavor by using really simple methods. We'll saute them with aromatics to make a comforting vegan lentil soup. We'll use them as a savory rub for lean pork tenderloin and toss them with veggies and chicken for a really simple weeknight sheet pan dinner. So let's get started. All right, don't be scared, but we're gonna take a peek inside my pantry. It's cool and dark, and this is where I like to store my spices, and I have them all organized alphabetically so I can see what I have. And I buy smaller boxes like this for spices that I may not use that often so that they don't go bad. And then for spices like cumin that I reach for all the time, I get a large jar so that way I have plenty of it to add to recipes throughout the week. First, 
Let's learn how to bloom spices and a little bit of olive oil to make a comforting Moroccan red lentil soup. So here I've got some aromatics, some ginger, garlic, and onion that I'm sauteing in a Dutch oven. And to that, I'm gonna add my spice mixture. So here we've got some curry powder, some cumin, and some chili flake. I like it a little spicy, so I put a little bit extra in there. So what you wanna do is put it into the Dutch oven, and then using a wooden spoon, make sure that you're really stirring it to coat all of those great aromatics. And you'll see that the spices are starting to brown already on the bottom of the Dutch oven. So once it's had time to hang out, you can see it's starting to form like a, a little crust there on the bottom of the Dutch oven. And that's definitely what you want. You're toasting the spices to give great flavor. Then we're gonna add our red lentils. We've got one cup of red lentils here. And before I add any liquid, I really like to make sure that I'm stirring to coat everything and all of those great spices, make sure that the ginger, garlic, and onion are all incorporated. Then we're gonna add a can of crushed tomatoes, super simple pantry item. And then I like to rinse out the can to add my water to the lentil soup. Give it a good stir. And you'll see I wanna scrape up all those bits on the bottom, those spicy bits to make sure that they're getting incorporated into the liquid. There, I'm adding my water. And this soup is really forgiving. If you see that it's starting to lose a lot of liquid and the lentils aren't quite to the right consistency yet, feel free to add a little bit more water if you want to. Really, really forgiving soup. All right, so now we're gonna add our coconut milk. I like to give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure that I'm getting all of the great coconut solids that are on the top. Give it a stir. And then you're just gonna let this simmer over a medium heat until the lentils are tender and the soup is the consistency that you want it. So here's our finished soup. Super comforting, really delicious. I like to sprinkle it with a little bit of cilantro. Sometimes I put toasted coconut, maybe a little bit of olive oil, a squeeze of lime juice just for a hit of bright acidity. Great weeknight meal, anytime. Now, let's see how to combine spices that you have in your pantry to make a savory rub. We're going to make cocoa chili rub or tenderloin. All right, so let's start off with our spice rub. Here in a ramekin, I've got some cocoa powder, some brown sugar, uh, a little bit of cumin, and some kosher salt. So I'm gonna mix this all up with my hands uh, to make a really delicious rub. It's got a great mix of sweet and savory. All right, so I've rubbed my pork tenderloin. I've let it sit overnight in the fridge and I'm ready to cook it. I've got a large skillet here with some oil in it, some neutral oil, and I'm going to put my rubbed tenderloin in there and make sure that I brown it on all sides. So you'll see when you flip it over there, you get that really great golden brown crust and that's what you're looking for. Now we're not cooking it all the way through on the stove top, we're gonna to finish it in the oven, but you'll see that it's browned all over and then that starts the cooking process. Make sure to seal in all those great juices. So off to a 450 degree oven it goes. And after about 15, 20 minutes, here's what you've got. Deeply caramelized, really delicious rub on the outside. Super tender pork tenderloin inside. Uh, about 145 degrees is what I cook it to. So this recipe is really simple. Again, great for a weeknight. You can serve it next to some cumin roasted sweet potatoes. It's great for the whole family. Next up, we'll use paprika to toss with some chunks of sweet potatoes and tender chicken thighs in this easy sheet pan dinner. All right, so next up, one of my favorite weeknight recipes, one pan dish. We've got some chicken thighs here, nice and tender. They have a great fat content, so they can really stand up to roasting in an oven. So I've got them here in an even layer. And then to my sheet pan, I'm gonna add some diced sweet potatoes. You can make them about one inch. You wanna make sure that they're just all right about the same size, so they're finished at the same time. You don't want a smaller sweet potato burning before your chicken thighs are done or before the rest of the larger pieces are done. So same size. So to this pan, I'm gonna add a mix of paprika, garlic powder, and a little bit of kosher salt. So mix this all together in my hands 
and then sprinkle it over the top of the sheet pan. It literally just takes minutes to do. And then when I'm done doing that, I'm going to make sure that it's all rubbed together and incorporated. So we're gonna add a little bit of neutral oil, olive oil here, drizzle it just again, right over the sheet pan. And I like to use my hands to really get in there and massage in all of the spices and the salt just to make sure that everything's evenly coated. Um, I also like to make sure that I put the protein on one side and then the sweet potatoes on the other. If they're all scattered throughout and the sweet potatoes are done first, you'll have a harder time trying to pick through. So organized like this is my roasting method of choice. And then off to a 400 degree oven they go. You don't want to have the oven too high or else the sweet potatoes will burn. See here you have just a really beautiful sheet pan dinner. You can transfer it over into a big platter, serve the chicken thighs next to the sweet potatoes. I usually like to sprinkle something on top, so I usually go for some chopped parsley or cilantro. And it comes to the table in just about 45 minutes. Thanks so much for watching. We hope this video has provided inspiration for you to dust off those bottles and boxes of spices in your pantry and get cooking. All of the recipes that we featured in today's video can be found on the FoodSmart platform under the recipe section. Happy cooking! And we're back. It's a, it's a webinar, lunchtime webinar. They want us to cook the spices. <laughs> okay, so Brad, while we're waiting for questions, um, do we want to chat a little bit about the features that are offered in FoodSmart? Absolutely. Let me get that going here. Give me just a moment. Thanks, sure. Lisa. Right. And while Brad is queuing that up, feel free to um, put questions in the chat, or you can be brave and, and answer them live if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, as Chef Lisa said, please do feel free to um, share any questions that you may have. Um, in the meantime, I will give a brief overview of uh, FoodSmart. Um, so how FoodSmart works. Um, so the top three reasons individuals have failed to eat well before joining FoodSmart are um, because of the fact that it's confusing. Um, you get a lot of marketing information. When you go to the grocery store, the first thing that you see is all the unhealthy food. Um, and so, and also, uh, of course, people have different uh, food tastes. Um, it can be per perceived as expensive. Um, I know that a lot of us um, feel like eating healthy really is an expensive decision to make. Um, so we help with that as well. And that it can take too long. Um, that eating healthy um, to coordinate the recipes and the meal plans and actually cooking the, um, cooking the meals can take too long. So here at FoodSmart, um, through the features that we offer, aim to help address all of those items. Um, so we... Um, have many different features in the app. Um, I'll just kind of highlight those. Um, so the FoodSmart app includes recipes, grocery lists. Um, it actually will um, ask for your food preferences as part of our initial NutriQuiz. Um, we have a Cook It Now feature, um, and that gives you the option to um, report what you've got in your pantry um, and make some quick recipes based on ingredients that you already have in your home. And that's a great way to save money by incorporating things that you have into um, some great tasting recipes that we offer. Um, we also offer a meal planning, grocery deals, a marketplace, um, so that you can actually um, order different items as well. If cooking is not your, your um, preferred method. Um, we do offer some different options um, to have foods delivered. Um, you can favorite recipes that you find in the app. Um, and finally, we do offer um, suggestions if ordering Grubhub. Uh, we offer some suggestions for healthier 
choices uh, through ordering with Grubhub there. Um, and as I mentioned here at the bottom right, the NutriQuiz um, is really the way to um, see how with your own um, personal responses, um, how best we can partner with you. Um, and you can actually take the NutriQuiz multiple times. It's a great way to really see the impact of um, the impact of the healthy decisions uh, that you're making and, and how we're helping to impact that for you. And I will stop sharing there to see if we've gotten any questions so far. We have one, somebody rightly so called me out for my love of cumin. Um, are there any health benefits from eating cumin? Um, and first I'd like to say, one of the reasons I love cumin so much is because it's grown all over the world and it's found in so many different regional cuisines. Um, you know, it's found in Indian cuisine, Mediterranean cuisine, South American cuisine. So um, it's just a really great pantry staple to have to make spice blends. Um, it also has antioxidants. It helps with digestion and inflammation. So cumin's just um, one of my go-to spices primarily because of how often it's used in recipes. Obviously, I love the flavor, but um, spices have really great health benefits also. Thank you so much, Lisa. Yeah, um, and also just wanna mention, uh, Michelle posted there in the chat, and I'll just call that out, um, that the Food Smart program is accessible through mycastlate.com forward slash four. Um, and you should see uh, for US-based salaried employees, you should see Food Smart there as an option uh, to select through, through Castlight for you. And we will share, um, as Lisa said, um, we will share out the link to the recording um, and the recipe as well. It looked delicious. <laughs> Yeah, that she pen dinner is one that I make very often. Oh, nice. I guess, and all three of them, I rotate through for sure. So not seeing any more questions come through just yet. Oh, we've got somebody asking a technical question. Um, Food Smart is asking for a password. Should we use our forward login? Michelle, is that something that you can speak to for Tanya? Yeah, sure, no problem. So um, when you log into Castlight, you'll see the option, um, you know, to download, like to, to Food Smart. So you don't want to go to foodsmart.com separately. You need to first go through Castlight and you'll set up a Food Smart account through Castlight. And then once you've set up the account, you can download the Food Smart app and log in with your account information. I hope that makes sense. If, if not, um, I'll definitely help you, Tanya, get set up. But yeah, you have to go through Food Smart or Castlight first. <laughs> Great. Yep. And then we will provide the links to the recipes that we've highlighted in the video here today. And in addition, we've got thousands of recipes. Um, you can filter through ingredients, whether you have um, some kind of intolerance like gluten or dairy, or if you have picky children, I've got a couple of kids in the house that don't like, just don't like certain ingredients, you can filter out through that. Um, you can even put them into a virtual grocery cart and have them delivered, which is really great for people who are busy. Um, so yeah, it's just a really, really great platform to filter out all of the unhealthy noise and get really delicious, healthy recipes. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Yep. Thank you, Michelle. The blog is great. Any other questions that uh, you all have today? Feeling like we covered everything. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate your time and uh, look forward uh, to you all using the Food Smart features. And uh, we're excited about continuing our partnership with you. And as uh, Lisa mentioned, we will send out the link to this recording um, as well as the recipe. So you can take a look at that and recreate it in your own home. And thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate you joining. Yep, I do. Oh, I do wanna say before everyone hops off, we're going to be having a, a summer wellness webinar in May. So would love to see you all there. It's gonna be really fun um, with one of the registered dietitians, my, one of my favorite coworkers, Maddie, talking all about how to stock a summer pantry and make healthy recipes for your picnics and beach barbecues. 
Sounds All right. Good. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.